Well, hello there again, friends. Today is 5-24-2022, and today, today is the Odin Project Vlog Day 108. And I am on number 5, uh, which is uh, now remove these elements from the HTML. So leave only the HTML body and div ID content tags, and instead create them by using JavaScript only, i.e. by appending each new element to the div content once the page is first loaded. Since we're all set up to write our code in multiple files, let's write this initial page function, page load function inside of its own module and then import and call it inside of Java or index.javascript.js. So, <clears throat> before I show you what uh, the code, um, I do want to preface everything by saying <laughs> um, just take my uh, advice here, and I wasted about a day of rabbit holing. Uh, don't do anything that this project doesn't explicitly say to do. So, without getting into it, I basically um, read into the Webpack documentation, and I did things in number five here that weren't explicitly said, and I I was thinking I needed to to do it, even though it didn't say to. Like for instance. I uh, delinked my CSS and put it in in as a CSS asset in the Webpack bundler, and um, and I did some things with that, and uh, added a rule set in the config, and uh, thinking I really needed it, I wasn't thinking I was going above and beyond because sometimes with these projects, uh, you know, there's some things that aren't said that you need to take care of. And I thought that was some of it, and I ended up getting all kinds of weird errors. And so I was Googling it, and I wasn't getting anywhere. The errors on, on, in the council weren't making any sense. Um, uh, Webpack documentation didn't have any uh, error handling information. So anyway, what I ended up doing, long story short on that, is I finally stopped after about a day of screwing with it. I was like, okay, <laughs> I don't think I'm doing this right. So I um, discarded all my changes from my previous um, git commit. And this is why I always say, make sure, or I put in the comments, make sure that you're uh, putting your git commits up to GitHub often after every section. And it saved my keister this time. Because instead of starting over with the whole project, I only had to start over, basically discarded what I was working on for number five, and started back after the end of number four, which is creating the bare bones HTML. So yeah, so that saved my keister. So be careful of rabbit holes and um, know when it's it's kind of a gray area, but kind of keep keen of that and know when you're supposed to be doing stuff like that and when you're not. In this example, I was not. So, <laughs> so we're only <clears throat> so take that for what it's worth. So right now we're only doing Webpack bundling for JavaScript, not anything else. Don't delink your CSS. Don't uh, uh, do anything else. Uh, don't. Uh, I also created a a, a bundler loader for my assets folder and that was a bad idea too so don't do don't do any of that stuff <clears throat> so with that said let's uh, let's get right into it <clears throat> so the first thing you want to do is delete everything from the HTML as a as a stated to do and then so what you're left with is the original ID div content that we or uh, the ID content div that we had from before and then you have your script tag, and remember this is wired up to your main.js that runs. This is what Webpack will uh, run off of. So when your index.html is called, it will look to this main.js to get uh, the rest of your uh, project, your JavaScript project that's per served by Webpack. So one thing you want to do, if you notice, my in the last video I said I didn't think it mattered where you put this script tag. Actually, it really does matter because it took me a bit of troubleshooting once I got going again fresh from all the mess I was just talking about. I was having a uh, syntax error that said e is not e is null, and I was like, "What the heck is that?" Well, inside of the main.js, if you I won't take the time here in this video, but if you go in um, and inspect it, e e, e is a uh, 
a compiled uh, variable that's that's meant to be in this example is meant to be your content div uh, well it doesn't have content div as its contents because when you run the script tag before the div as you can tell content div hasn't been declared or created yet so it, of course it's going to be null so the simple solution for there if you run into e is null just move your script tag below the div and then the div gets processed first and then the script, script tag gets processed and then voila no more null error because e will be the id content so that's that'll take care of that so then the next thing you want to do is go down into source down here and you want to create a new javascript file i just call mine initial dash page dash load dot js so you're just going to create that and then over here it looks like a lot of busyness but really it's just a lot of repetition so basically everything that we had in the html has just been converted to dom uh, manipulation over here and so to go over this real quick i will go ahead and make this a little bigger okay so we have export function and initial page load so we're going to export the function um, and we're going to export it as a module as you'll see here in a moment um, but <clears throat> the first section, I probably should have put some comments in here. I'll probably go back and do that before I um, before I upload to GitHub. Make sure when you're done, <laughs> again, save my keister. Make sure you're uploading to GitHub uh, your finished products of each section. So we have a con uh, constant content div takes on document query selector content. So we're creating that variable content div, and then we're creating another variable called heading. That's going to be our H1. That was at the top of the page. Here's that text content we've seen a million times. Welcome to JB's Tech Talk uh, Restaurant Lounge. And then we have a classless add of, um, you don't have to add this. I just did for flexibility in my CSS. I don't currently have CSS targeting landing title, but in case I do, I have something to put against the heading, uh, against the, the top heading of JB uh, Tech Talk Restaurant. So I call I added that as landing title, and you do that by dot classless dot add, and then you can add in anything you want in string format, and then you append it to content div. Next one is the same format, but we're doing top image is going to be creating element for image tag, and the top image gets the uh, class of top image, which we do have to add that. I do well, I do anyway. I'm trying to get out of the habit of saying we, but uh, I have to do that because I do. I am targeting top image in my CSS for that uh, margin, I believe. Um, and then I have, this is I had to Google this because uh, both of these, because I actually had not seen this before. So you can actually add source, uh, because I've never actually DOM manipulated an image before, image tag. So to do that, you do your uh, variable dot SRC and dot ALT. So ALT is your alternate screen text reader for um, screen readers for people that are blind. And then dot .src does your location where your asset's at. So double dots, source, assets, restaurant, dash image, dot JPEG is where that sits. And you have to use double dot in front because um, this is kind of going to be kind of weird to explain. But the workflow of when this actually is, is called is all the way up inside of the uh, index.html on the browser that lives in dist so since our asset is in assets folder in source we have to do double dot to tell it to go to the parent directory of JB restaurants page and then back down um, because if you don't do this you'll get a error it'll it will, just won't load and then in the console it'll say uh, unable to locate image or something like that and then we're going to append that to content div <clears throat> and then the other three the next three anyway are just the paragraph ones so I'm not going to go over all of them I'll just go over the first one because they're basically repeats so these are the three p tags we originally had I originally had so we have para one uh, create element p classless add landing page copy we ha I have to have this because I'm targeting that for the CSS and then here's the text content um, that we had before and then content dot div uh, dot append child para one so we're going to append that to content div same thing for para two and para three all with the same class list because I'm targeting all of those with the same uh, CSS styling 
and so that's that so we're exporting this with with the export function a, as a function um, and then we're also simultaneously going to make this a uh, module because uh, in the text it says to uh, in the requirements text here it says to create it and then call it import and call it inside of index.js so this is what I'm doing here here's the index.js and the top line here import stars module from dot forward slash initial dash page dash load dot js so what this line does is imports asterisk just means all or in everything so we're going to import all this content basically it's just going to see it as the function I, I, you know obviously but we're going to import the function as a module from and it's important you do as module because for the longest time I didn't have this I just did import um, and I came up with a name from you will get an error message if you do it like that to the effect of uh, <coughs> excuse me to the effect of um, uh, export uh, something like export module is not uh, declared at the top or something like that basically it's saying that it doesn't the rendering engine doesn't know that it's a module so you have to either explicitly say it or and that's why we're doing it here to tell it that hey this is in fact a JavaScript ESM module so I'm sure there's other ways to do it I actually um, went digging into the webpack um, documentation that's where I found this um, actually kind of buried uh, it wasn't readily available and I don't think it was on anything that we reviewed it was in an obscure article um, fact I'll just show you real quick it was in this one here under ECMA script modules so um, if you go down to importing right here this is the example that I used right here and that is the import and then the export I use for example you can all these will work they're showing you different ways to do it and this is the export module that I use that we just took a look at so also um, going going back to the code so then we have to call it then so it's not enough just to import it you have to call it so that just like we would normally so we're gonna have the syntax for as module dot whatever it is you're trying to call so we're calling initial page load which is a function that's why I put the prints after and then module meaning we're going to import it as a module and that also satisfies the uh, text requirement to write it up inside of its own module and then import it so um, I don't think at this point it, you, you don't need to get super fancy over here with your uh, initial page load export function just create a, a, a self-contained function with everything in it I think that works fine you probably could get away with doing a, a module uh, a module styled function um, you might have a little bit more uh, kung fu to deal with on on the uh, index.js import and if, if you do that because it's not you're no longer importing exporting a function you're exporting a uh, variable as a function as an object so you, there's a little more complexity there so again on this one I I went with not anything complex not anything more than what they're asking for so with that um, with that here's what it looks like in the browser so it looks exactly like it did before but if you notice um, all of my tags are classed properly and they're coming out of the DOM manipulation so so that's pretty cool and you know that because if you look at the index.html there's nothing here except the di the original div and then the script tag that it's calling to uh, run all that DOM manipulation via the uh, index.js so it kinda like goes backwards so the index.html looks at the script it runs the main.js which the main.js is uh, output rendered code and then if you go backwards on that it will eventually point to this file this index.js which is in your source and then this points back to this via the import module and then you go through here and it runs the export and then passes it all the way back up the chain so that's kind of the workflow of it so 
Um, yeah, so that's it. So next time we're going into step six to uh, do some tabbing in the browser and probably making more modules, I'm assuming, uh, more asset modules and different uh, JS files. So I uh, hope uh, today was uh, informative and inspiring to you. Uh, thank you for coming along the journey with me today. Please like, share, and subscribe for more content. And let me know in the comments section how you guys are doing so far with this uh, project. So with all that said, till next time, see ya.